Let's begin then with our first dialogue we have. So we're going to look at a family, right? Family situations, why? Because they're very natural, we're used to them. Let's take a look at this dialogue. Maybe you can read along with me from your book. Fred says, we need a plan. We need to plan our summer vacation. So here we have Fred who looks like a father and they're going to get ready for their summer vacation. Jane says, I don't want to wait until the last minute like we did last year. So here we begin with a negotiation context or situation. Fred and Jane, mom and dad, uh, husband and wife. Fred's pointing out we need to do something and he's giving it a kind of a deadline before. And Jane is saying she wants to plan before a deadline too. So in a way they found something in common. This is actually a very interesting idea. You cannot have a negotiation unless you have at least two people who have something in common. And here we have that. Fred and Jane both want to do something. That's a key point. Fred says, we couldn't even get a hotel room. He means last year they waited too long. Everybody or every place was packed. That is a special reason to plan ahead. So Fred is laying out, why do we want to plan ahead? Why do we want to make a plan for summer even though summer's not here yet? And Jane says, it should not be too hard to get a flight to Disneyland if we go before the summer rush. Disneyland's in California, of course. She wants to go to Disneyland. So she's gonna plan ahead. And Fred says, I thought we would travel overseas, see another country. So now we begin a key part of negotiation. We have something in common, but we have something different. What's different? It looks like Jane saying she wants to go to Disneyland and Fred saying he would like to travel overseas. So I guess maybe they live in America and he would like to go to Disneyland, which is in California, or she would like to go to Disneyland and Fred would like to go overseas to another country. Jane says, the kids really want to go to Disney. They've been counting on it for months. All their friends have been to Disney many times. So now Jane is laying out the information of why it's important, why it's important to go to Disneyland. And then Fred responds. Fred says, I know. But traveling overseas will give them a chance to see another culture, really learn something about the world. So now we're developing two positions, Fred and Jane. They both have something in common. They want to go somewhere for the summer. They want to plan ahead. They don't want to wait till the last minute. This they agree on. So they do agree on something. If you agree on nothing, you cannot negotiate. If you agree on something, you can begin a negotiation. So we begin with, yes, we have a goal. This goal is almost the same, but now we find out. In this goal, something is different. In this case, quite different. This is going to Disneyland or traveling overseas for vacation. Jane says, I think everyone would like to just rest during their vacation. Go to Disneyland, you can rest. Stay in the hotel, you can rest. Go on the rides, take it easy, have fun. Fred says, that sounds inflexible. You mean we can only rest on our vacation? We can't learn anything? Now Fred is kind of fighting back. You see he's saying, well, I don't agree with you. What do you mean you can only rest? That might not be good. And Jane responds, that is not what I mean. Of course, we can do both. I am flexible. Why does Jane say she's flexible? And why does Fred accuse her of being inflexible? Because in a negotiation, we have something in common and we have something that's not in common. It's important for us to try to make the thing that's not in common come together, somehow find something we can agree. That way we can solve our disagreement. We can come to a conclusion. 
If I say you're inflexible, that means you are not willing to change. If you are not willing to change, then we cannot move together. So Fred is using this to kind of accuse or say that Jane is doing something wrong, inflexible. Jane says, no, she is flexible. She can change her mind. She says so. We shall see if she really does. Get to my slide here, give me one second. There we go. Fred says, well, you know, our neighbors, the Millers, they took separate vacations last year with everyone going where they wanted. That seemed to make everyone happy. But I really want us to have a vacation together. Now here we come into a kind of another core point. I want to do something, you want to do something. We both want to go on vacation. Okay, we agree. Next. I want to go overseas. You want to go to Disneyland. We disagree. What's one way to solve this? One way is you go where you want and I go where I want. If you go where you want and I go where I want, I'm happy and you're happy. So this is a real negotiation strategy. It can lead to a conclusion of you do what you want, I do what I want, I'm happy, you're happy. However, we can see that Fred isn't really so uh, happy with this idea. He would rather go on a vacation altogether. Jane says, I agree. Separate vacations wouldn't be the same as a family trip. The bottom line is, if we don't go together, then I don't want to go. So here we have Jane giving us a bottom line. In your negotiation, the bottom line means I will not change this. This is the least I must have in order to conclude this negotiation. If we want to have a negotiation, you must at least give me this. This is my bottom line. So bottom line is really a key idea. Fred says, at least we can agree on that. Can't we find some kind of compromise? Maybe we could stop at Disneyland for a day or two on our way to another country. So here, Fred is trying to give a compromise. Can't we have a compromise? Can we do a little bit of what you want and a little bit of what I want? Remember, one way is you could do what you want, I do what I want, we don't come together. Or maybe I can do a little bit of what I want and a little bit of what you want. That's called compromise. Jane says, that's a good idea but we waste so much time at airports and then we would have to spend more money to get to and from the park and all that before we leave on an international flight. To be honest, I think we would all be tired out already. Fred says, I just don't know what we can find that is in the middle that can make everyone happy.